Do you have a heating, ventilation, or air conditioning problem and need it fixed as soon as possible? Has it been a long time since the last time you have the HVAC system in your home or at your office maintained? Finding the right HVAC contractors can sometimes be hard. You need to make sure that they have the knowledge, skill, and experience to provide you with complete repair and maintenance services. That's why we're here to help. With a highly trained, licensed, insured, and experienced team of technicians, we're proud to offer the best services in the field. From sale, installation, to repair and maintenance, we take each project with care and with a focus on open communication and getting the job done right the first time. Maintaining the ventilation, air, and heating systems in your home or office is the key to the longevity of your units and effective energy savings. So don't risk your money on an ineffective HVAC system. Call us today. Good morning, this is DCR Troy Community Radio.com. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN for David Denoyer on TCTV. It's time for the Lincoln Community Center Report, and with us this morning, Shane Carter. Good morning. Good morning, Clint. Hey, uh, first up, I want to ask, how'd Thanksgiving go over at the center? That's a good, actually, I'm glad you brought that up because I kind of left it off the list. It went really, really good. Um, we had, <clears throat> I know, signed in about 217 people, I was including volunteers. And we were very much so more organized than we have been in the last three years, so I was thankful for that. Um, I believe that speaking on the show every week has helped us get volunteers, definitely helped us secure donations. I know like Chuck next door, and I mean even Turkey Mini Radio, you guys have helped us with turkeys, and that that's what the process is really because we're feeding so many people. Went well. Um, very thankful for the amount of people that helped uh, support it and show up. And I think one thing next year probably I want to try to do is maybe start a little earlier in the day because like 5.30 we start and then by 7 people are still showing up and some people wanted to come earlier. We had a group of people waiting outside probably about 4 o'clock so it went well. I think feedback is if we could start it closer to 5 may help get everybody home a little earlier. All right. Yes sir. Thanks Sounds like it was an excellent time. It was. It was. Kids, a lot of kids? A lot of kids. Um, they did like their crafts, their uh, headdresses and things like that <laughs> and uh, made their turkeys out of the plate with the, fe with the fake little f uh, feathers or whatever so it went good man. I was really thankful for the support. Excellent. Now, you have a silent auction coming up today. Tell yes, us about that. It's today from 4 um, p.m. to 6 p.m. It started off back in 2011 just as our annual open house, and it uh, has grown now to be our open house, a silent auction where we offer like tours, talk about our programs, talk about a recap of this year, and then we have about 40 items that the board and other um, patrons have donated. So we've got things such as uh, like special effects has donated some things for their salon, uh, Giacomo's, the Caroline, uh, the Submarine House, all like a lot of local downtown restaurants. Then you have things such as like hotel stays, tickets to sporting events, um, trinkets and things for the holidays. So we're excited about it. Um, I believe that hopefully it'll be one of our biggest fundraisers of the year. And the main goal will just be to get people in the building and get them acquainted with uh, what we're doing and what our, our, our goals are for next year. So. All right. Now, one of the things you're doing now, youth basketball, uh, tell us how that's going. That's been going good. Um, we've had an influx of a lot of new kids from, um, I guess I'll say, from the surrounding vicinity of Troy. So we've got kids from, a lot of kids from Covington and Miami East and kids from Piqua, um, even some kids from Fletcher and Christiansburg. So it's been good. We feel like, feel like we're growing um, as far as the league. And we now have it where we, we have so many kids that pre, uh, the pre-K and kindergarten group, there's four teams. The first through third grade group, there's four teams. And our older kids kind of dwindle down a little bit. But it's been a lot of fun. Um, I'll tell you the one thing, and I know uh, a lot of people see this when you come over to the center. The only struggle is on Saturday afternoons, it's hard to find a place to park. And the building is so compact and small, like everybody's on top of each other. But that's something that we're working at for the future. And uh, we're just glad that we're able to utilize the facility. Well, uh, and at the facility, you also have your after-school program, uh, a lot of kids. Yes, we've been picking up about 50 kids a day with the van. Wow. So, yeah, it's been actually at capacity at some schools where we can't really add on yet, um, but it's been good. We've had a, a lot of volunteers, new volunteers signing up. Um, talking to our educational coordinator, um, well, Mark Scott and Tracy McDonald, they were saying that our need for volunteers is like Mondays and Thursdays were low. So any listeners, um, retired teachers, even the high school students that need volunteer hours for National Honor Society and to graduate, um, we're a site that they can do that at. So 
want to definitely uh, let people know about that opportunity. And just let people know that a lot of the kids just need help with reading and sight words and, and basic, uh, even math that you and I can do. So it's, it's, it's a, uh, I think it's a, definitely an opportunity. If you want to get involved, you want to make an impact on a young kid's life, um, come down Monday through Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. And we just ask that you um, go to the safety building, the Miami County Sheriff's Department, do the background check. We have a small volunteer form that I look over just to make sure that we're uh, keeping people with uh, high integrity and people that have the right mind to work with the kids. And then that allows for us to kind of find a time for you to come down. But any day, 3 to 5, is uh, more than open, and, and we're welcome to volunteers. Excellent. So uh, uh, you're looking for volunteers now. Yes. Mondays and Thursdays really kind of the days where we need them. Um, and what I'll say is this. Anybody that's interested, contact the main office at 937-335-2715. Or you can email myself at scarter at lcctroy.com, and we can find a time to sit down and see maybe a lot of people are comfortable working with the older kids, some people are comfortable working with the younger kids, and just making sure that we can find a good fit for the volunteers. All right. Tell us about the angel tree that you have at the center. Yeah, we, um, this is something we started a couple years ago. The senior citizens in the pool, or not all seniors, but some of the uh, pool members are senior citizens, they wanted to do something to give back to the kids at the center. So we put a small Christmas tree down there um, in the pool area, we decorate it, and the kids make little ornaments to put on it. Well, we asked the um, people giving that you don't go over $10 so it keeps it fair for everybody. And last year it worked really good. They each got their little present and it worked out well. Well, this year we thought about doing something different where we pack a stocking full of, like, say, says Clint, you're a big kid, say Clint, 18-year-old male, and maybe you need things like, I mean, gym socks, or maybe you need toothbrush, toothpaste. We want to focus just on basic necessities going into the new year. So this year we've asked that we put a little criteria together. Um, you're more than welcome to pick one of the ornaments, and it may say, Clint, uh, 17, boy likes basketball. And we just ask that they, they mean the people that are participating, keep the gifts under $10. Um, and it's, it can be, remain anonymous. It's not like they have to meet the person that their secret Santa is. And then on the 22nd, when we have the Angel Tree um, party, the kids, we have like some small, I'll uh, say kind of, uh, I wouldn't say a full meal, but some snacks and some finger foods. And then the kids get to go sit on Santa's lap. We have like a Santa that comes in and allows for the kids to then get their, um, get their gift that they've been selected for, and then also just a small fellowship before Christmas happens. So it's really open to the community. Um, I will say that I know you've had an influx of people bringing them in lately, but I know that Cole mentioned that we're expecting maybe 50 to 60 kids on that day. <coughs> and hopefully that will um, allow us to provide not only we've got some things at the center, but from volunteers and the supplemental stuff we came in, we'll make sure everybody gets something. So that will start at 5 o'clock on December the 22nd at the Lincoln Center. And we could use volunteers on that day mainly with setup, breakdown, and just helping control the chaos of all the kids. <laughs> Help control the chaos. Yes. I like that. Now, uh, folks, so they know what's happening at the center. Yes. You have a mailer that's going out. Yes. So if anyone wants to get on board with that, what do they need to do? Um, well, so a couple things. First thing is we, we started this mailer last year. Our board directors wanted to send it out to, uh, number one, build awareness of the center, but also allow for people that wanted to give at the end of the year to contribute to the center being a, a nonprofit and a tax-deductible donation. Well, last year it was mainly for operational and staffing and being able to carry on our mission. And we had a lot of people that contributed to it. Well, we just used the um, what would have been the registered voters from the primary um, back in 2012. And what, it, what we did was our goal was to just find a corpus of people here in the community that maybe wanted to support the center or didn't know about it. And we had a, a huge return on that. Um, if people want to, per se, uh, receive the, the annual mailer and or want to receive more information on the center, I want to encourage them to um, drop me an email at scarter at lcctroy.com um, with your name, maybe your interest, maybe you want to volunteer, maybe you want to receive the mailer to contribute financially, whether if it's donating money or even supplies or cleaning goods. And what we'll do is we'll send out around December 15th, we'll send out our letter that explains kind of our year um, synopsis of some of the things we've accomplished, our highlights, and some of the things we plan to do coming into the new year. And then that will allow for um, the individuals um, to send in either a tax deductible donation or even to find out what the, the needs are and they can come in and serve. Um, so if you are interested in that, please uh, send me an email at scarter at lcctroy.com or call the Lincoln Center at 937-335-2715. We'll add your name and your address to our, our address list and uh, we'll make sure we keep you updated not only with the mailer but our, our quarterly and monthly newsletters. And it'll be a way to keep more people in the loop of what we're doing. Um, with technology and with social media and the internet, it's kind of a lost um, art, if you will, of uh, sending out mail and things. But for us, we've realized that a lot of the people that aren't technologically savvy, 
they're not seeing what we're doing. So if you exactly you not know, everyone is connected to the web. Absolutely, and some of the people that are, if you will, retired or maybe have the ability to give, or even have um, a situation where they like support nonprofits. If they don't know what we're doing, then there's no way for them to say, "Oh, I went on Facebook and tomorrow they're having the silent auction," or, or "I checked the website." So we're thinking that by sending out the old traditional mailer, maybe we can capture some more people that we're missing on the internet. So. Good idea. Uh, you wanted to give out some thanks. Uh, United Way is wrapping up their campaign. Yes, and, and obviously the Lincoln Center, we've been, to my knowledge, we all the way back to when it was the United Fund, um, we've been an agency of the United Way here in Troy, so we're thankful for that, um, not only for their support, but the way that they've supported us as we've grown. And I just want to thank not only the patrons, the businesses, um, the city, a lot of people going to make the United Way um, campaign go every year. I know Richard puts a lot, a lot of effort, him and his, his staff, in managing that and keeping things organized. But at the end of the day, um, without the support of the community and the businesses, all of the United Way agencies here in Troy suffer. And I think that each one of them is very unique and important, whether if it's um, hospice, whether if it's Partners in Hope, uh, whether if it's the Troy Rec, all these places serve a need for the community. So I just want to encourage people, it's not too late to give to the campaign, and uh, I want to be able to thank the people that have continued to support the United Way of Troy. And uh, what are your holiday hours now that we're, we're, getting, we're getting into the thick of it here? We are. So we're closed on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Um, we'll reopen the day after Christmas. And the important thing is that during the holiday hours when the kids are out of school, we encourage parents, please don't bring the kids down until noon. That allows our office staff to get things done and us to get organized for their snack in the afternoons and, the, and their recreational programs. Now also, going into New Year's, we're closed New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Um, what we will do is reopen on that Saturday after New Year's, but it'll be open normal hours uh, 9 to 2. And if there's any kids that want to come down and participate or parents that are struggling with uh, getting them there transportation-wise, contact me um, or the office at 335-2715. And with the van and with our transportation not being as hectic through the holidays, we may be able to coordinate some rides. So, All right. Uh, now, generally, by this time of the year, things are pretty sloppy outside already. Yeah. Uh, so you've been saved on the mop. Oh, gosh. And, and and things like that at the center. But what kind of uh, donations for this time of year come in handy? What what could you really use? I'll tell you. Um, right now, we were just we were talking about in a staff meeting. We can really use um, first aid kits. We we've one or two full ones are good, but it's like we get them at the beginning of the year and we re up them halfway through the year. And as you know, like you use the tape or you use a triple antibiotic equipment, you don't have a complete kit. So we try to keep three complete kits throughout the building. Um, we can always use, now going into the year, germicidal spray, uh, disinfectant spray, hand sanitizer. Those things try to keep the germs down and stuff like that. And then as we come into the winter, and I pray and hope we don't have any snow. Um, <laughs> if we do but get, we know it's coming at if, some point. If we do get snow, um, we, we can use salt. Um, salt is something we, we have to budget for and something we always are purchasing. We've got a huge parking lot and, and areas we have to keep clean, so those are some things we can use. And then I also believe... Um, as we work into the new year, we can always begin to uh, resupply our paper products such as plates and, and, and plastic silverware and cups and things like that. So I would say for the next couple months, those are kind of our needs. All right. Uh, anything you want to wrap up with this morning? No, no. I, I just will say that everybody continue to do their uh, whatever their snow dance or whatever. If we all work together, <laughs> then they will get to February and we never have snow. Ooh. Let's keep our fingers crossed on that one. Gotcha. Uh, maybe a little bit of snow for Christmas morning. Maybe so. Christmas Eve, Christmas morning. And I could, do, I, it could be like this the rest of the time. I like it. Thanks a lot, Shane. This has been the Lincoln Community Center Report. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN for David Neuer on TCTV.